Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. And all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much for joining and giving your valuable time and association this morning. Hare Krishna, please take over the call. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll begin with Naratam Das Thakur. Okay, Maharaj. Uh, I should mention one thing that in the United States, the celebration of the appearance of Naratam Das Thakur is today. And in Europe and in India, it is tomorrow. So um, those of you who come to my regular call tomorrow, we will uh, not do Narottam Das Thakur tomorrow, but we will do him today. So uh, hopefully there is enough devotees who have been coming on from my regular call on this particular call. Okay, Omagyan Timirandasya Gyanajana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yenatas My Shri Guruvena Maha Shri Chaitanya Menobi Stam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kedam Mayam Dadati Sma Padanti Kam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shri Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Kinamini <laughs> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And so, Srila Naratam Dasta Kaur is really one of the more prominent Acharyas, especially after the appearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I, might, I should say, after the disappearance of Mahaprabhu. He appeared one year after the disappearance of Mahaprabhu. And uh, his life is really um, filled with great amounts of spiritual meaning, uh, principles that we can learn in our own devotional life. He is really, we call him Mahasayi. So he's a Mahapurush. He's not just one of the great saints. He is leading the great saints in many ways. Naratam Das Thakur in his Istadev, his spiritual body in the spiritual world is a particular associate of Radharani known as Champak Manjari. That is his actual name in the spiritual world. There is, there is one book called Naratam Vilas that was written by Bhakti uh, by Nar Narahari Chakravarti. He also wrote Bhakti Ratnakara. Naratam Vilas was redone by a devotee in America who is a disciple of Srila Prabhupada. Her name is Sitala. She's the good wife of Prabhupada's former personal servant, Arisari Prabhu. And uh, she has done an amazing job in taking the life pattern of Naratam and taking the Naratam Balas as it was printed and re explaining it in such a way that it's very, very, very absorbing. I found myself unable to 
stop reading it the way it was presented. Interesting. It flowed. It, uh, I had read the original Naratam Vilas before that and other books written by Naratam, but I found this one to be uh, the best. <laughs> So any of you get a chance, uh, I think it's important that we study the life of Naratam Dastakur because he's not, a, he has given so many meaningful instructions in his life. Um, also another book by Nityananda Das, who was a disciple of Janava Devi. He's done a book called Prem Vilas in that book, there is much information on Srila Maritam Das Thakur. Of course, when we sing our Bengali songs, the bhajans given to us by Srila Prabhupada, that is known as our Vaishnav song book, we find two personalities who are prominent in their contributions, and that is Bhakti Vinod Thakur and Srila Maritam Das Thakur. And probably one of the favorite song of Srila Prabhupada was, was written by Srila Naratam Das Thakur. Uh, let me think if I can remember the song. Yeah. I can't remember it off the top of my head. But it's, it was the favorite of Srila Prabhupada by Narottam Das Thakur. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was journeying to Vrindavan, he turned away from Vrindavan into the direction of the Padma River. And when he, when he arrived at the Padma River, He was calling in ecstasy, Naratam, Naratam, Naratam. Devotees had heard the Lord say this name before, but they had no, no idea, nor they had met, met any person by the name whose name was Naratam. So when they heard, they questioned the Lord, who is this Naratam? <laughs> The Lord said, my heart is kirtan. Anyone who does kirtan is very, very dear to me. And Srila Naratam Das Thakur, or Naratam as he referred to him, he is a great personality who will appear very soon and he will revolutionize the whole process of kirtan. The Lord then took his bath in the Padma River. And when he did, the river started to become agitated by his presence. And the river was churning this way and that way and waves were appearing. The Lord told the river, the personality of river, he said to her, I am leaving within you my own Krishna Prema. Soon, there will be a person who will come and bathe in your waters. You give him that Krishna Prema that I'm leaving here with you. The personality of the Padma River responded to the Lord and saying, how will I know who that person is? And Lord Chaitanya said, well, when he bathes in your waters, you will have the same experience that you are having when I appeared in your water. So that place now, although it's the Padma River, that particular place is called Prematali, where the Lord left his own personal prema in the river.
He also told Lord Nityananda that when you meet Naratam, inspire him to go to Vrindavan. Naratam was born on a full moon. There were all auspicious signs in his body as a great per personality. He was born to a person named Krishna Nandadat, and his mother was Narayani. His brother was Purushottam Dat, and they came from the Ketari province. All auspicious signs showed that the child was a great personality. As we know, that there are what is called samskaras. Samskaras are the passages of life. There are 16 samskaras. There are seven main samskaras. And one of the main ones is called the, the name and grain giving ceremony. We do this quite regularly in our ISKCON society. We don't do the Nama Karna, but we do the Ana, Ana, Ana Karna, which is the grain giving ceremony. When the child reaches the age for a boy, when the ch child reaches the age of six months, that ceremony is done. For a girl, it can be done at the at the month at the five month period. So then the first grains are given. So a ceremony was organized, and many people came because Krishna Nanda Dat was actually a king, and he was a ruling this small province. So he was a king in his own right, respectful, respectable, had many followers. So he invited, he held a big, big ceremony and called many people to come. And so the auspicious ceremony of the name giving, grain giving ceremony was about to happen. And many persons come, including many great sages, <coughs> saints, sadhus, yogis. And when it was time for the ceremony to begin, Naratam was there. He was a baby, six months old. <clears throat> and uh, when they tried to give him the grain, he refused. <laughs> he would simply turn his head in a different direction. And as hard as they tried, they couldn't get him to eat the grain. Now, this is considered to be very inauspicious. When the child, you know, very strongly refuses to take the grain. And so there was a feeling of unhappiness everywhere. But then, as this was going on, one sadhu who came for the ceremony, he was enlightened and he said, he is not taking the grain because it is not Mahaprasadam. This boy will only eat Mahaprasadam. So make the offering. So they took the grains and went before their temple deities, performed the RT, I mean the offering. And later it was brought back. And this time when they gave it to Naratam, he happily ate it. So based on that ceremony throughout his whole life, he was only given Mahaprasadam. As he was growing up, he heard about Lord Chaitanya and he would lament the fact that he never had the opportunity to associate with Lord. And then there were many persons who would come to see him and some of them were sadhus and he would gravitate towards these saintly persons and they would speak to him about Krishna's pastimes. It was on one old Brahmin that came and he would come every day and he would tell the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya. He would speak about Srinivasacharya, Ganga, Ganga Das Bhattacharya, 
Srinivas, and so many other great souls, some living and some passed away. When he heard about Srinivas Acharya, his mind became attracted and he really wanted to serve Srinivas Acharya. At the age of 12 years old, Lord Nityananda appeared to him in a dream and told him, go to the Padma River. He embraced him in the dream and entered into his heart. After that, that child was never the same. His parents were a little concerned because he was very eager only for spiritual things. They wanted to, him to grow up a little bit more and then find a nice wife and become the successor to his father, but he wasn't interested in any of it. After some time, Lord Chaitanya also appeared to him in a dream, told him the same thing, go to Vrindavan. Then again, another dream, Lord Nityananda and Advaita, both of them together in a dream told him, go to Vrindavan. So his parents can see that he was very restless and wanted to travel and they were worried. He was still a young boy. And they saw that the only thing that he was interested in was hearing about the Lord and about the Lord's great devotees. One day his father was called away on business and his mother was watching over him, but he somehow or other, in a very tricky way, convinced his mother to let him go out for a little while. And that allowed him to escape. And he went, he took to the forest path. He traveled, he came to Vishwamrav Ghat. And then, of course, at one time, in his, when he came out of that, heading towards Vrindavan, he was also led by Providence, you might say, to go to the Padma River. So he took his bath in the Padma River, and at that time, the river showed great signs of agitation. And his body was somewhat darkish, but after he bathed in that river, Lord Chaitanya's frame of bhakti entered into his body and his body became golden, just like Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya gave him special mercy. After that, Lord Chaitanya again appeared to him in a dream and said, you should take initiation from Lokanath Swami, Lokanath Dasko Swami. But Lokanath Dasko Swami was not interested in anyone becoming his disciple. He had vowed never to take any disciples. He was such a great devotee that when he heard Lord Chaitanya was traveling, he went to try to go see him. And every time he went to the place where he heard Lord Chaitanya was, Lord Chaitanya had just left that place and went to another place. And this happened repeatedly. And finally, the Lord appeared to Lokanath and said, stay in Vrindavan. Don't try to come and find me. I'm always with you. You don't have to seek my personal association. So he did that. So finally, hearing, remembering the dream of Lord Chaitanya, Naratam went and he found this great personality and fell at his feet and begged him, please, my heart has been given to you in devotion. I know no one else. Please become my spiritual guide, my spiritual master. Lokanath Swami said, 
I do not accept anyone as a disciple. So please go somewhere else. <laughs> Couple of times he begged again, and each time Lokanath very adamantly refused. Lokanath Swami's humility was so strong that he felt, how can I be the spiritual master of anyone? I'm such a fallen soul. This is a quality of a Vaishnava. Although a Vaishnava may have a nice position and be respected because of that position. They never consider themselves to be anything more than the humble servant of the Vaishnavas. They do not even consider their situation to be important. So a lot of times they take the responsibility of helping others simply to please the Lord who has requested them to do so. Otherwise, they are not interested in putting themselves in a position of being honored. But Naratan was determined. Now every day, Lokanath Swami would go into the woods to take care of his body, and then he would come out. And Naratam would come right after Lokanath come, came, and he would clean the place very nicely. So every day when Lokanath Swami came, the place was so clean. Finally, after this was going on for some time, Lokanath was thinking, I'm coming here every day and this place is always so clean. When I leave, it's not like that. I wonder who's coming here and, and cleaning it. And so he decided to hide to see. And lo and behold, when he hid, he saw Naratam coming and very menially cleaning up everything afterwards. When Lokana Swami heard that, he was mortified, he was shocked. He jumped out from his hiding place and said, you're a prince, because Naratam was born in a royal family, and you're doing this, this low service? How is it possible? And then he was, you know, besides himself with embarrassment. And then Naratam Das said, he said, I have given my heart to you and I have to find some way I can serve you. So Krishna has given me this way. And, they, and still Lokanath Swami didn't accept Naratam after that. And so the Lord decided to intervene. So one night when Lokanath Swami, right after that, was sleeping, Lord Chaitanya appeared to him in a dream and said, and you should accept Naratam as your disciple. So being very obedient to Lord Chaitanya, he did. And that was his one, and of course, the best of all disciples. After some time, Naratam started to travel. And uh, he came to Vishwam Ghat, went to the Jamuna, visited Mathura. He met one old Brahmin who told him about Rupa and Sanatana Goswami. And Lord Chaitanya was orchestrating a lot of this. Lord Chaitanya appeared to Srinivasacharya and Jiva Goswami and said, Tomorrow, Naratam will appear. All the devotees didn't know who this Naratam was, but because Lord Chaitanya had given them the message they were expecting to meet a great personality. So Srinivas and Jiva Goswami were together at the Radha Raman temple. And Naratam, 
came when he did, he came to the Godavindji temple. So the news came to Srinivas and Jiva Goswami. He's at the Govindaji temple. And they came and they met him and it was a wonderful, wonderful reunion. Of course, in order to get there, there were so many difficulties on the way. When uh, he was traveling, he had heard, he had stopped at the uh, one place, one Brahmin's house. And when he, he was there, he had heard that Rupan Sanatana Goswami had left the planet. So then the three of them, Jiva Goswami, Srinivasataraya, and Naratam. And so Jiva Goswami taught him scripture. Srinivas Acharya taught him Vaishnav etiquette and cared for him very nicely. They all lived for a while. He stayed at the Radha Damodar temple in Vrindavan. Then later another great personality came. His name was Shamananda Goswami. So Shamananda Goswami Naratam and Srinivas Acharya became really, really close friends. Jiva Goswami decided that he wanted to recopy all of the books that had been written by the great Acharyas, such as Rupa Goswami's book, Bhakti Rasamatu Sindhu, Ujwala Nilamani, and Sanatan Goswami's Brihad Bhagavatam Rita, and so many other works. Uh, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami's Chaitanya Charitamrita. So he arranged for a caravan to take all these books, which were the only copy of each, to go to the scribes in Navadvip and have them recopied. That was a long and dangerous journey. And so Jiva Goswami arranged for guards to be as part of the trip to guard the books. And he told Naratam, Srinivas, and Shamananda, you take these books and you have them recopied. So they had to pass through very dangerous areas, but so far everything was working out good. As they were traveling, there was 11 guards with them. They were coming upon this one province, which was called Vanavishnupur. Vanavishnupur was ruled by one king named Birhambir. Birhambir was the leader of the Dacoits. Although he was a king, when people would travel through his kingdom, he would send out his spies to find out who was traveling and what they were carrying. And if he found out that they were carrying anything valuable, he would ask his spies to attack them and steal it. And so he did that quite often. And he would get all his knowledge from one astrologer who would tell him when people were coming. So finally, the same king, the same astrologer told the king, there are travelers and they have a great treasure. So he told his uh, spies, which were like Dacoits, you know, get that treasure that's coming. But he gave a special order this time. He said, do not cause anyone any harm. Try to, try to take it without causing any harm to anyone. Hmm. So, by the arrangement of the Lord, one night the caravan stopped and everyone went to sleep, even including the guards. 
which was really unusual. The guards would usually stay up all night guarding. But this time everyone fell asleep. Just at the same night when the Dacoits came, they simply stole the box of books. And they took it and brought it back to the king. When they woke up in the morning, everyone was shocked. The books were gone. They were crying out. They didn't know what to do. And finally, Srinivas, he heard a voice coming from the sky. The king of Vishnupur has stolen the books. So Srinivas told Naratam, you go on to Ketarigram and you preach there. Shamananda, you go to Utkala and you preach there and I will meet you all later. I will stay here and try to find the books. So following their orders, they left. When Srinivas was there, he made an arrangement to visit the king at his palace. And he came simply as a visitor. And each day the king would have a group of pundits who would come together in the early morning time. And they would sit and read and discuss Srimad Bhagavatam. So this particular day, the meeting was in session and Srinivas came and he sat in just to listen. As he was listening to the discussion, he was not happy what they were saying because he could understand what they were saying was not correct. So they could see that he was showing some, uh, what is it? resistance. So they questioned him. Well, if you have a and he started to explain. And by, by his explanation, the king became enlightened that this person is such a great pundit that he should stay and become one of our ministers. And the king was so happy when he heard him, he made him the chief pundit, chief minister. And Srinivasacharya stayed there. But then he asked the king, well, the king asked him, why, why are you coming in this area? He said, well, I, we were traveling and we lost a, a treasure of a big box of books. Oh, the king said, well, I have the books. Come. And he showed them and there they, all the books were. Srinivas was so happy to receive the books back. The king was happy to give it to him back. And so that king later became a devotee because of the association and guidance of Srinivas. And but after becoming a devotee, he transformed his entire kingdom into Vaishnavas. That was his enthusiasm. He was such an, well, you might say he was influential in a fearful way. So in a fearful way, people became Vaishnavas. But that was good because you become good even through ill means, it's still good. So, and then of course, later on, he uh, met up with uh, Srinivas Acharya and Naratam. And there are many, many wonderful stories about the life of Naratam. I guess the most important one is the Keturi Gam festival where Naratam Das Thakur uh, installed six sets of deities. Devotees had come from all over from, from Jagannath Puri, from Vrindavan, from Navadweep, to be there for this festival. It was the first Gaur Purnima festival after the disappearance of Lord Chaitanya, 50 years later. This was in uh, 1584. The Lord had been disappeared in 1534. So during that festival, Naratam, who is known to be a great Kirtani, 
was asked to lead the kirtan, and so with a small pair of cartels and a large group of people behind him, he began singing so slowly, so sweetly, with so much devotion. And as he was singing, more and more people started to chime into the kirtan. Pretty soon, it was a full-fledged kirtan with 14 murdangas. No, I'm sorry, seven murdangas and 14 cartels all playing together. So this particular festival was famous because, because of that kirtan and the devotion, Naratan was chanting with so much feeling and so much devotion that at the one point during the kirtan, Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda, Dwaita Gadadhar, Srivas, and many of their associates all who had left the planet came back and danced in this kirtan. It wasn't a vision. People were not seeing some vision. They were seeing the actual appearance of the Lord in, these, in this kirtan. And everyone was overwhelmed with love and happiness. They saw Lord Shaitanya, many of them saw their relatives and friends who had already departed appear again in this kirtan. In our time, we were so fixed on just singing so sweetly, so lovely. And this went on for some time, and the boys were low, rolling on the ground and feeling ecstasy. And then at one point, Lord Chaitanya disappeared along with all his associates and everyone felt like this is the worst thing that could possibly happen. They, their, their happiness had reached such a height that when the Lord disappeared, it felt like there was nothing worse. Hare Krishna Mara. I well, sorry we were up really late last night <laughs> because of Lord Nityananda's festival. <laughs> so we're feeling a little slow this morning. <laughs> so I'll stop here and we'll end here and see if there's any discussions. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much for the beautiful, beautiful class of Glories of Narottama Das Thakur. Uh, thank you so much for your association today, this morning, Maharaj. Uh, is there anybody having any questions for Maharaj? Please go ahead, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Hare Krishna Maharaj, Hare Anyone? Of course, the life of Narutam Das Thakur is something you should really find time to go deeper into. The best book is Narutam, Narutam Vilas, but we can learn so much. Narutam, although he was, he was considered a Kayasta. That means in one sense, although he was born in a royal family, he was not a brahmana at all. And in those days, in order to give initiations or to accept disciples, one had to become a brahman. Still, it's still like that. But what happened was that he was criticized and even vilified in many ways because he was accepting brahmans as disciples and he 
was born in a lower family. But of course, we know, according to scriptures, that it is not by birth, janma, but it's by qualification that one uh, can function accordingly. So if one is a qualified Brahma, Brahman, and they're acting in that capacity, then they are accepted as Brahmana. If one is born in a Brahman family, but is not doing the duties of a Brahmana, then they have to be categories according to what duties they are doing. So it is not by Janma, but it is by uh, Karma or activities. So Naratam Das, he would made a few, he went and Narayan Chakravarti was one of his disciples. And there was another disciple, um, Ramachandra Kaviraj. Ramachandra Kaviraj and, Nar and Narayan Chakravarti were both great souls who had taken shelter of Naratam Das Thakur. The local Brahmins were becoming disturbed that he was making disciples from these types of people, feeling that, that he was not qualified to do this, and he was breaking all the, the uh, principles. And so they went to the king and complained. The king, his name was, I think it's Nishringa Rao, he said, okay, well, if there's some, what should we do? Well, the Brahmin said, we, we want to defeat him and show that he is not qualified. Well, how, you, how will you do that? Well, there is Rupa Kaviraj. Rupa Kaviraj was one of the most uh, expert debaters, and he will come with us. King said, very good, we'll make an entourage. You bring Rupa Kaviraj, and then you can challenge Naratam. And if he loses, the king said, I will punish him for taking this role pretentiously. That was the program. So they were traveling. Now the word got out that the king with the Brahmanas were coming to meet Naratam. So, Narayan Chakravarti and uh, Ramachandra Kaviraj decided to intercept this little envoy. So they set themselves up alongside of the road as a betel, betel nut sales, salesman and a clay pot salesman. So as the king and the Brahmins were traveling, they came across them. And by the arrangement of the Lord, they said, oh, let us go get some betel nut and some clay pots. So they came and uh, Narayan Chakravarti and uh, Ramachandra Kaviraj was there. And they were somewhat in simple clothes, not dressed normally as Vaishnavas. And so when the, when the Brahmins, along with the king, inquired about buying, Narayan Chakravarti and Ramachandra Kaviraj responded to the requests in pure Sanskrit. And they were amazed. Wow, these simple people who are simply betel nut and pot, clay pot wallers they're speaking Sanskrit. Who are you? Well, we are disciples of Naratam Das Dakar. Oh. So and then they said, if you want to meet our spiritual master, first you have to defeat us. And so Rupa, Rupa Kaviraj came and they were e and he was easily defeated by uh, Narayan Chakravarti, who, and then the, they came back to the king. The king said, well, if this is the disciples of Naratam and you can't defeat them, 
what is the use of going to see Naratan? <laughs> Let us not waste our time. So that was the that was the uh, conclusion in this particular situation. And so that was one one. Uh, he also the, one of the biggest dacoits in the area of that time became a disciple of Naratam Das Thakur. The king was trying to catch this dacoit for many years and couldn't do it. After this dacoit became a disciple of Naratam, he came to the king and surrendered to the king and said, I have committed so many crimes, so I'm, I'm willing to accept punishment. And so the king, you know, he wasn't merciful. He decided to uh, punish him. And that Dakoy, now a devotee, suffered tremendously. But he was thinking, this is what I deserve because I'm getting free from all my sinful reactions by accepting the punishment due to me. This is all due to the mercy of my spiritual master. His name was Chanda, C A N D A, Chanda. Chanda the Dakwe. So there was many, many wonderful stories in the life of Naratam. How he left the planet when Srinivasacharya, when he received the news that Srinivasacharya left the planet, Naratam Das Thakur removed himself from active service and went into Mirjan Bhajan. He simply did his own private bhajan, not wanting to associate it anymore because his heart was completely broken, losing, knowing that Srinivas was no longer present. And after some time, Naratam left his body. They took his body and brought it in ceremony. And uh, when they, when they had his body laid out and people were coming for the ceremony, some inimical people who didn't like what Naratam was doing, they came and they were speaking so bad during the ceremony and that's inauspicious. During the departure of a personality, if someone speaks bad about that personality, that ruins the whole ceremony. So some of the devotees were hearing that so they didn't know what to do. So they prayed to Naratam, Naratam, Naratam. We we're feeling oh, so miserable. They're speaking so badly about you. So Naratam, although he had left the body, he uh, something, some miraculous thing happened. His body was laying there and on his chest appeared a golden Brahmin thread. It just appeared. And then Naratam sat up, he got back to life. When these persons who were critical saw what was happening, they felt so embarrassed and realized how wrong they were and started profusely apologizing. So Naratam was back and he stayed for a lot while, but after some time, he also heard that Ramachandra Kaviraj also had left. And it says that Ramachandra Kaviraj and Naratam Das Thakur were like two souls in the same body. They were so close together, close, close, close associates. So upon hearing that, Naratam decided to leave. And he told one of his associates, I believe it was Narayan Chakravarti, you come with me. I have a service for you. So he waded down to the Ganges and then he had a pot of milk with him and he gave the pot to Narayan Chakravarti and he said, I'm going into the Ganges and you come with me. I, and then you sprinkle this, water, this milk upon me. No, I'm sorry. You it wasn't milk. I'm sorry, I'm getting it wrong. It was, it was, he said, we both should go into the Ganga. And when I'm in the Ganga, you bathe me with Ganga water. And while you're bathing me, 
no matter what happens, don't stop. This is my instruction to you. No matter what happens, don't stop bathing me. So they were there waist deep and Narayan Chakrabarti was putting water on Naratam. And every time that water touched a particular part of his body, that part of his body would melt and turn into milk and merge into the Ganga. Finally, his whole body just turned into pure milk and he was gone. Never for him, he had left the world and went back to the spiritual world. Of course, it was very difficult to do that service, but he obeyed his spiritual master knowing his strong desire. But, it, but later, of course, we also know that Narakam Das Thakur, one of his services in the spiritual world was to cook milk for Radha and Krishna. So he was, <coughs> and mostly for Radharani, he would make nice milk for Radharani. So he, that was his, uh, his internal mood to serve Srimati Radharani by cooking nice milk for her in the spiritual world. So here are these are additional pastimes, but you must read the book because the book is unbelievably sweet, deep, and attractively absorbing. Uh, I find my, I found myself uh, not wanting to stop, but then I was thinking if I read it all in one day or two days, then it'll be done. So I very, with great effort, forced myself to read only a small section each night so I could relish it for weeks and weeks. It was so sweet. So Naratam Das Thakur is a Mahapurush and uh, his songs, especially Shri Guru Charana Padma Kevala Bhakati Sadma Bando Mui Sarvadan Mate Yanhara Prasade Bhai E Bhavatari Rai Krishna Prapti Hoi Sangha Hote Guru Mukha Padma Bhakya Chichete Koriyo Akya Arna Kariro Mane As Shri Guru Charane Rate E Se Utamagate E Prasade Purvi Sarva As Chakshudan dilo ye janmi janmi prabhu se divya gyan hridde prakasitu prema bhakti yaha hoite avya vinasa yati vede gahi yana racharita shiguru Siguru karuna sindhu arama janarda bandhu lokanath lokirdan jivan aha prabhu koro doya dehamora parachaya evya sagusa tribu one we sing that song every day in our temples, the Guru Puja song, Prabhupada introduced it. Naratam Das Thakur's song is so full of devotion and love for his spiritual master, Lokanath Das Goswami. And that song is not simply a bhajan and glorification of his spiritual master. It is the perfect spiritual philosophical explanation of the position of the Guru and the mercy of the guru and the relationship between the guru and the disciple. That's why Prabhupada loved that song and Prabhupada instituted it as the daily practice in each and every one of our temples. Shama Gauri Nitta Kishori Pritama Jodi Shri Radhe <laughs> I love your name. We love you too, but I love your name also. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. We all love you, Maharaj. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's what keeps me speaking. <laughs>
थैंक यू महाराज अनंत कुटी धन पर प्रणाम शिल प्रभुपात सर्वोदय की जय नरोत्तम दास ठाकुर की जय एच एस लोकनाथ महाराज की जय श्री लोकनाथ महाराज की जय थैंक यू महाराज फॉर थे is no words like our sham gori nitya ki sori uh, explain that there is no words to every friday your deep deep devotional association very slowly and steadily explain all the leelas maharaj thank you maharaj that is my radhanath maharaj favorite uh, kirtan sham gori nitya ki sori <laughs> thank you <laughs> hari krishna Thank you. Yeah, so, uh, has said it right. We all love you, Hare Krishna. Thank you. This is this is my the love of the devotees is the is the elixir the the uh, energy that we get to serve the Lord. The devotees show us favor, then somehow or other, Krishna will show us some favor. Hare Krishna, Maharaj, yes. Dhan Bhakt Pranams. Uh, Maharaj, I just was uh, wanting to know, so our uh, Narottam Das Thakur, Srinivas Acharya and Shamanan Pandit, were they contemporaries and uh, uh, or what well, was the... They all appeared right after the disappearance of Lord Chaitanya, which was in... Lord Chaitanya disappeared in 1534. Narottam was born a year after um, of course, you'd have to check and see when the other two great souls, Srinivasacharya was already there because Srinivasacharya was born during the time of Lord Chaitanya, right after Lord Chaitanya received sannyas. And that was in 1510, Lord Chaitanya received sannyas. So just about a year later, I think, uh, Srinivasacharya was born. So Srinivasacharya, yeah, he, I don't know how much association he had because he mostly was in the area of Jajigram, that's where he was born. And then he spent much time in Vrindavan after that. Um, Shamananda Pandit, he came later, I think. And uh, he was, uh, yeah. I think he also was a little later. Than, he was around the same time as Naratam, but Srinivasacharya was older. Um, so uh, Ramachandra Das was uh, the disciple of Srinivasacharya, right? And he was. Uh... Yeah. 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 Ramachandra was. Yeah. One day when Ramachandra was. He was getting married. He was in a wedding procession and he was on his way to get married. And Srinivas was there with his associates in the area and they were talking. And somehow he's, they were speaking loud enough where Ramachandra heard. And they were, they were saying, look at this man. He's about to put a rope around his neck. <laughs> he's getting married. <laughs> So when he heard that, <laughs> something struck inside of him and he, he stopped the marriage <laughs> and he fell at the feet of Srinivas and asked him who he was. And then they talked and after some time, they jo he joined. And later his brother, who was Govinda Das, he was also a great, later became a great soul and also joined. Govinda Das was a Shakti, a Shakta. He was worshiping God as Durga. But when his brother took initiation from Srinivas, that changed his mind. And then his, his worshipful deity, Durga Deva, appeared to him in a dream and said, you know, <laughs> you should worship Krishna because I worship Krishna. <laughs> Durga Devi told him. And then he wrote that famous song, Bajahu Remana Sri Nanda Nandana. Abhaya Charada Rabindure, Dulava Manavada, Jana Satsangay. 
in that famous bhajan, that was Govinda Das. Govinda Das was the brother of uh, Ramachandra Kaviraj, who joined Srinivas Acharya. And then when he met Narakam Das Thakur, they were inseparable. So Srinivas Acharya told uh, Ramachandra, you stay with Narakam. So he gave his disciple to Narakam. And then they became very, very close. Oh, thank you so much, Maharaj, for explaining so beautifully. And thank you for all your love, Maharaj. Uh, I'm so undeserving, but, but you're so kind and merciful. Thank you so much, Maharaj. We're all feeling the mercy of Lord Nityananda. His mercy is still in the atmosphere. It'll always be there, but it's more there now than it was a couple of days ago. <laughs> I hope everyone had a, uh, what we say, an enlivening and an inspiring Nityananda Triodasi. Maharaj, yes. Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble opinion. <laughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, we, we had an online celebration in Charlotte. Oh, okay. That's nice. Yeah. How many, many people came? Yeah, they, they just log in into Zoom and they joined the program. Uh, we sing Kirtan, Kirtan was there and then Abhishek. So Praveen Govind Prabhu got his BT at our house and we did Abhishek and we made Chapan Bhuga offerings for them and Abhiram Saka gave class on Lord Nityananda. Wow, good. That was in Charlotte. Sounds very fulfilling. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Your we, are, we were fortunate. Our temple is is functioning. And so we had a, a regular ceremony in the evening. We did an Abhishek with Gornitai, then we had Kirtan after, and then uh, we gave class. And then after that, it was a feast. So the devotees here are fortunate for some reason we are able to continue on with our worship services here. Thank you. Yeah, and our deities here are Panchatattva. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadara, Sri Vas. They're all sitting on the altar here. So when we take darshan, we get the best. Hare <laughs> Krishna Maharaj. I just wanted to say thank you for such a beautiful class. I really enjoyed it because Narutam Das Thakur, his bhajans are so precious to me. I love them so much. So thank you so much. I'm glad that I got to hear you speak on him today. So thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. I wish I could have spoke more, but somehow I wasn't able. <laughs> but yeah, his bhajans. Uh, what, what is that song? But by, by the one Prabhupada liked the most. I'm trying to think. Uh, Radha Goan I knew Manusa Janma Matsthaya Radha Krishna Navadiya Janiya Sunya Vishainu Goloka Premadana Harinam Sankirtan Ratin Jan Milo Kane Upai. Yeah. Is it Hari Hari Vipale? Yeah, that's it. That was when when Jamuna, the Jamuna, she asked Srila Prabhupada, Prabhupada, what is your favorite bhajan? He said, Hari Hari Deepale. <laughs> and that was Maratam. So yeah, Prabhupada loved that bhajan. And sometimes he would refer to it in his lectures. 
and sing it. He would sing parts of it just to intersperse his lectures with some additional philosophy. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's the, that was Prabhupada's favorite. So if you're listening to that, you're with Prabhupada. <laughs> Hi Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to Your Holiness. For this nectarian class on uh, Narutam Das Thakur, my question as you were speaking, I was thinking about these three great devotees, Srinivas Acharya, Shavananda Pandit, and Narutam Das Thakur. I was wondering, would you kindly tell us? Who they are in Krishna Leela, please? I mentioned Narutam at the beginning. That was Champak Manjari. Um, Srinivas Acharya, give me a minute and I'll give you the answers to all three. I'll have to do a little looking up. Let me see if I can find here. Okay. We're looking for Srinivas now. Srinivas Acharya. Let's see. Let's see if it describes here who he was. Hmm. <laughs> Can't seem to find anything with reference to who he was. There is one book, it's called Gora Ganadesh Deepika. In that book, it's who's who, who, what personality who was in Krishna Leela or in the spiritual world appears in Gaur Leela. So I don't, I couldn't find anything for Srinivas. And the other one was Shamananda. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Shamananda. Shamananda. Well, he's 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 ex. Oh no. no. Let's see here. Sri Samananda was known in the world as Ridayananda's dear disciple. He was a grand disciple of Subal Saka, one of Lord Krishna's dear friends. Mm -hmm. Doesn't say who he was, but his spiritual master, his grand spiritual master was an incarnation of Subal who appeared in Krishna Lila. Let me see if it says anything here, who he was. Let's see here. Mm -hmm. That'd be right in the car. You have to find the Gaur. If you get that book, Gaur, Gaur Gonadesh Deepika, then you got the who's who for everybody. Unfortunately, I don't have a copy of that book. <laughs> well, let's see. Here we go. Let's see. Ramachandra Kaviraj, he was, he was Karuna Manjari, 
in the spiritual world. So we got that Ramachandra Karuva. That's the best I can do right now. <laughs> Well, thank you, Guru Maharaj. We can try and see if online there's a PDF of uh, Gora Ganodesh Deepika or just do some research. It's okay. Thank you. Uh, Hare Krishna, is there anybody having any more questions for Maharaj? Okay. Lalita, 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 do you have something for me? Yes, I think, Maharaj. But you're you're not coming through because you are you're you're speaking oh. to all of us who are deaf. <laughs> <laughs> Mataji, your microphone is unmuted, but we cannot. I Maharaj, now it's okay. Now you have given us back our hearing. Thank you. <laughs> Maharaj, uh, we are very thankful to you in spite of your late night program. Uh, I mean, you came to give us your association. Your continued association is so nectarian. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Uh, please uh, give us your blessings uh, so we may follow your instructions. You're taking so much uh, care and effort for us. Very, very grateful for that. Thank you, Maharaj. Well, I'm appreciating your appreciation. <laughs> Thank you. I look forward to someday entering into the the continent of the United States of America. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Okay, thank you. So I guess we can stop here. Um, I'm going to have to pass up the japa because it's going to be just like my lecture. So I decided I better not. So um, but we'll see you all again next week. And thank you for the opportunity to be with all of you and to share the life of Srila Narutam. Yeah, Hare so Krishna, Maharaj. Uh, you know, um, we can do one thing. When you join, you can chant one round with us. Because we chant, um, uh, before class, we chant like for two hours, three hours, whatever. You know, everybody's chanting. So if you, you can chant with along with us, that would be very nice. Uh, so next week, I can come on earlier and chant with you. Yeah, you will be very happy, you know, to okay. chant. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I need some association. <laughs> <laughs> we, need, we need your association, Maharaj. <laughs> we need Maharaj. <laughs> okay, my obeisances to everyone. Thank you so much, Maharaj. I would like to offer my obeisances to you. Vancha Kalpata Robiasya Kripata.